Hello, everybody. Welcome to the virtual college exploration for all Virginia students sponsored by the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Counselors and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many different sessions that are happening. So be sure to check out the full schedule at strivescan.com forward slash Virginia. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website, strivescan.com forward slash Virginia. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters. Good afternoon, everyone. I do want to say welcome to all our students that are joining us this afternoon. And I just want to say I hope that between the four of the panelists on here this today that we can give you some good information on writing equestrian programs, equestrian um, studies, anything that you're interested in with the equestrian world. I hope that we're here to answer your questions. Today, our purpose is to introduce you to some opportunities and some, um, some colleges and universities out here that do offer equestrian programs, whether they be the academic program only, the uh, athletic side of the equestrian world, or just pleasure riding if that's what you want to do. So we have on with us today, we have Stacy and Laura from Johnson and Wales University. Laura is actually out of the Providence, Rhode Island office, and Stacy is out of Virginia. Go, Stacy. We have Odessa Thacker on with us today. She's one of the admissions counselors from Emory and Henry. And my name is Debbie Bale. I'm the associate uh, director and the director of regional admissions for St. Andrews University. So we're going to get started here in a few minutes, and I just want to go ahead and reemphasize that we want you guys to ask us questions. Please don't think that there's a question out there that we probably have not heard before, so we very welcome that question. Or there's a question that we can't get the answer for if we don't know it. So remember, shoot your questions in the question answer box, the chat box at the bottom. Stacy will be uh, facilitating that question answer at, answers at the end, and we will try to get to all of them. And if we don't, we'll touch base with you by email at the end of our session. But if everyone would, please think up some good questions for us. And I'm going to go ahead now and turn it over to Laura. And she's going to introduce you to Johnson and Wales. Well, Laura gets that up. I just want to say hello. Um, I'm Stacy Thomas. I am also with Johnson and Wales. And I um, am one of two Virginia counselors. Um, so if you are um, from Northern Virginia or Central Virginia, I am your admissions counselor. So thank you. Take it away, Laura. Sorry about that. Hopefully you're now able to see my screen. But we'll go ahead. Johnson & Wales, uh, we're located in Providence, Rhode Island. I'm coming to you from Rhode Island today. Um, so thank you so much for having me. Uh, Johnson Wales, we're about 7,000 students here on our Providence campus. We have about 75 different programs across the university. One of those is our equine business management program. Uh, truly my favorite. It has riding and non-riding specialization, so you do not have to be a rider to be involved in this program, um, as well as a minor in equine assisted therapies um, as well. So a lot of different components making up this uh, program at the university, um, an IHSA team and an ID a team and you are welcome to try out for these teams regardless of your major uh, so you could be a psychology student a business student and still try out for these equestrian programs um, we come with 27 acres actually in Rehoboth Massachusetts so right over the border about 20 minutes from our campus we have the beautiful Center for Econ Studies my favorite part of campus um, and that has a 32 horse stable three arenas one indoor arena included in that uh, for the New England winters. Uh, we do heat that as well, so you will stay warm while you're here. Um, a hunt field in the back left of this picture that you can't see, that's absolutely beautiful. And then a classroom area inside um, the barn that overlooks our indoor arena. So a nice viewing area, classroom area, 
um, to watch any clinicians, any demonstrations, any writing practices that might be happening throughout the day. Uh, we also have faculty from various uh, facets of the equine industry. I'm going to put their contacts on the screen, so feel free to take a picture. I'm happy to have you connect with any of them. Dr. Bowser, who is a veterinarian, uh, Dirk Fogg, our IHSA coach, Crystal Taylor, our IDA coach, and then Erin Cardia, who actually is a master clinician, certifying clinician from the Certified Horsemanship Association and oversees our equine assisted therapies uh, minor here at the university. So some great folks, we're happy to answer any questions and I'm so excited to join you all today. And at this point, I think I turn it over to Odessa. So I do not have a slideshow only because it's a lot of information compacted in one. And so I'm just gonna talk about Emory and Henry for a minute. Um, so we are located in Emory, Virginia, which is Southwest Virginia. We're about 15 minutes from the town of Abingdon. That's what we consider the closest town to us, but we are our own town. Um, we have about 1100 students and a ton of sports for such a small school, quite frankly. Um, as far as our equine studies program goes, you've got equine studies, which basically sums up as equine business and uh, farrier science, nutrition, it's, it's a little bit of everything in there. Um, we offer a bachelor's of arts as well as a bachelor's of science in equine studies. I'm an alumni, that is what I received was my bachelor's of arts. Um, we also have an equine studies minor and a pre-vet program available. Our riding teams have 21 national championship titles and that includes IHSA, IDA, and ANRC teams. Um, our facility is about 120 acres and it's located about 15 minutes away from campus in Bristol, Virginia. Uh, we do have a shuttle that will run students there if they don't have their own car, just something to think about. Um, we have over 80 stalls available for horses. About 20 of those are available for students to bring their boarded horses. And we have about 65 horses of our own. We have two indoor arenas that connect to our barn, although it's not heated. <laughs> I wish it was, but you know, Virginia doesn't get too bad in the winter by any means. Um, we also have one large outdoor arena and a cross country course in our back 40 acres. Uh, we also have a classroom and a viewing room, which is heated, thankfully. Um, and all of our horses have their own tack and grooming supplies, so you don't have to bring anything but your saddle and a helmet, basically. Um, another important note is that you do not have to be an equine studies major or minor to be on any of the riding teams. You can also take equine studies classes and not major or minor in equine studies. Um, we also have equestrian performance scholarships available. So if anyone's looking into that, feel free, get in touch with me. I think next is Debbie, I believe. Debbie, you're muted. Can you see my screen? Good. Odessa can tell you I had technical difficulties with all of this last week. It was a disaster. So I've learned to ask now. Um, let's talk a little bit about St. Andrews University. We are located in Laurenburg, North Carolina. For those of you that have no clue where Laurenburg, North Carolina is, it's about an hour and a half north of Myrtle Beach. So for anyone that is interested in going to the beach as well as riding, we can, we can help you with that. Um, St. Andrews has uh, right at a thousand undergraduate students that actually reside on our campus here in Laurenburg. We have some satellite campuses located in Pinehurst, North Carolina, as well as Charlotte. Most of our riding, all of our riding comes out of our campus here in Laurenburg. We do have about 300 acres of riding. We own about 110 horses. We can board up to about 150 to 160 on campus, but we have boarding for about 200 within a five mile radius. We do have five competing teams. Three of those teams are nationally ranked. They are our hunt seat team, which is our largest team. Our ADA, our IDA team, the Intercollegiate Dressage um, Association, a dressage team. Uh, we do have a Western National Rank team as well. We have an ANRC team as well as an in-house show team. 
about 35 to 40 percent of our students do touch the equestrian facility here at St. Andrews University. They may not ride competitively, they may be part of the therapeutic horsemanship program and are touching, um, touching the barn. They may be an equine business management major and not ride competitively, um, but work at the barn. You can mix and match riding any way you want to at St. Andrews. We have um, students that come in and they go strictly into our pre-med program. They have nothing to do with an equine major, but want to ride competitively. I had students this past weekend in New Jersey say, I ride, I've been riding all my life, but I haven't been showing all my life. What do you have for students like me? And I tell students every day, we have every type of rider. We love the student that's the beginning rider. Me, if you put me on a horse, I could probably do real work, not gonna canter, and I'm not gonna trot. Um, I wouldn't get a scholarship, probably, not today. But I would make one of our teams, not a nationally ranked team, but a beginner level team. Then we have the, the riders that want to be professionals, the riders that want to do recreational ride. It just depends on what your level of riding is and what you want to do while you're at St. Andrews. We do offer um, equestrian scholarships. They are on top of your academic scholarship. So once we look at you in house, and it admits you based on SAT GPA, although we are waiving that SAT or ACT score now. Then your, at, um, your, I can't even think, your equestrian scholarship would be layered on top of your academic. Speaking of academics, I did touch on this just a tad. We do have four different majors in equine. We have the equine business management major, which is a business track with their equine emphasis. We have a therapeutic writing major. We have a business administration major with a therapeutic writing track. And we also have equine science that falls under our biology. We have a strong pre-vet program as well, and that would be a biology major with a pre-vet track. So at St. Andrews, you can mix and match it any way you want to do it. And we encourage students that have never even ridden to come out to the barn and experience our riding. You'd be surprised how many football players and lacrosse players we see before they graduate. So just a little bit about St. Andrews and now I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna turn it back over to Laura to touch on um, what are you looking for in an equestrian program? So Laura, I'm gonna stop this and mute me and let All right, so I'm gonna jump ahead uh, a slide or two and pull up a few questions I think you should really start thinking about when you're looking at these equestrian programs, right? So if you're looking for an equine major, specifically, maybe you don't want part to take part in those equestrian teams, you don't wanna be competitive, that's okay. Um, maybe you're only looking for the equestrian team, maybe you don't want the major, you want a different major, but still be active and involved. Um, or you're looking for both. So here are a few question that, questions that I typically hear from students, uh, questions that I think you should start thinking about um, when looking for these programs. So if you're looking for an equine major of any sort, um, something to consider is asking about the college's um, arena, what their stable looks like, how many on-campus horses do they have, where is it located in relation to campus, and how do you get there, right? Look at all of the courses the department offers related to your area of interest. So are you mostly interested in the writing courses, the business courses? Um, are you looking for that strong science curriculum to be a pre-vet major and apply on to veterinary school after you graduate? Check out the internship programs that these schools have. What kind of hands-on experience will you get during your time there as a student to grow that resume and grow your experiences? Think about the location of where this program is um, being offered, right? Where is the school located? What is in the surrounding area when it comes to different types of professionals, organizations, or companies that you might want to work for, right? So I think of a great company named SmartPack, and that's right in our backyard um, up here in New England, for one example. Um, think about the program. Um, does it help develop a broad base of knowledge and skill? So when I want to maybe be a professional trainer, do I still have that business background to keep my program running over the years and make it profitable? 
um, what type of fees are involved. So is it additional uh, for you to take these writing classes, to take this coursework um, or lab work and be involved in the equine program? Some schools have additional fees and some don't. That's a really important question to ask when considering your fi financial commitment. Um, think about the equipment you're required to purchase in advance. So do you need um, your own saddle? Do you need your own um, saddle pads, grooming equipment, clippers? Um, what do you need to bring with you? Because that's an additional financial commitment that you want to be prepared for um, as you're making this transition to the school. Uh, think about the professors and your coaches. What are their professional backgrounds? What connections do that they have in the industry that they're able to help share with you or connect you with for those internships, for those jobs after you graduate? And then ultimately, I know a question that I hear almost every time I talk to an equine student is, can I bring my own horse? Um, and that's something to think about. Does the facility uh, allow the opportunity for you to bring your own horse? If you do, is that the only horse you're riding or do you have the opportunity to ride others that are in the program? Or maybe they don't have the opportunity for you to bring your own horse, but what's available in that area so I can board my horse, still be there, um, be with him on my off hours when I'm not in class, um, but still have it local, still have this experience riding a variety of horses while I'm there to develop that skill set. Um, so definitely some important questions to think about when looking for the equestri uh, equine program. So business, science, anything of the sort. Then when you start looking for the equestrian team, there's another set of questions that you might want to start thinking about. So think about the competition format. Um, so I mentioned we have IHSA and IDA. Um, some of the other schools mentioned they have Western teams. Some of them have in-house um, horse show teams, right? So what is the format um, and what are the disciplines that are being offered? Right? And what skills do that they need? What level do you have to be competing at or riding at to be competitive when you're trying out for these teams? Think about uh, the farm. Think about the facility. Is it owned by the university or is it an outside organization? So is it a private barn where you'd be going and paying for lessons but competing with other members from your school and riding together? Um, so there's a couple different options when you start thinking about those equestrian teams and how they're formatted, how, the, how they're run by a university. Does the university or the student or a combination of the both fund the program? So is it a varsity team? Is it a club team where students are really self-funding um, these endeavors? Or is the university backing it? Or of course, there's that combination of the two as well um, that always happens. Think about um, additional fees again in terms of lessons, competitions, or travel fees. Maybe there's hotel stays. Um, are you responsible for paying for those fees or does your university take that on? Um, how many times a week will I ride? And then how many students ultimately are on the roster? Um, think about how many each team carries, how many positions or spots are open at different levels. Um, sometimes you might want to ask the coach about the number of graduating seniors that they just had, right? Think about how many spots may be open in this coming year and at what levels are they really looking to recruit for? Um, so those are just a few questions that I think are important that I hear from students every day. Um, I'm seeing some nods from my colleagues on the line too. So definitely some things to keep in mind. Um, but with that, I'll stop sharing my screen and I will send it back over to Odessa. Are you next or is Debbie next? I'm sorry. Debbie, no, you're good. Well, I'm talking to you given time, right, ladies? Thank you, Laura. I, I agree with Laura. I don't, I'm sure that Odessa and Stacy will say the same thing. Every question or every mind that Laura had on her list, please ask. Ask us all, every day, ask us. Different schools offer different things. Different coaches are looking for different type riders. So depending on what school you're looking into, it's going to make a huge difference on, on those answers. An NCAA school is going to be looking for totally something totally different than an IHSA school. So that is something you've got to keep in mind as well. Am I looking at NCAA schools? Am I looking to ride with IHSA? Know these acronyms before you, you get out there and start asking questions as well. Google them. Learn them. Try to figure out the difference before you get to us, although we will help you. Sometimes we, we can't answer the NCAA questions. Um, Odessa and Stacy, I know that you guys and Laura are like myself. Sometimes we'll get those questions at a college fair. 
what's the difference between NCAA and IHSA? We all, I can say, we all know IHSA on this panel, but those NCAA questions you need to ask those coaches and those schools because we, this group is, is strictly IHSA. Let's talk about the recruitment process a little bit. Um, I hear a lot of times from parents that will email us or call us, they'll say, where do we find, where do we find writing programs? Where do you find us? Um, that's a great question. Where do we go to look for writers? Um, I think I'm going to talk, speak for the group now, and you ladies chime in if there's some place you go that I haven't mentioned. One place we look is we look in our own backyard. Are you writing IEA currently? Are you going to zones? Are you going to write in your region? Are you writing in A, in A shows locally? We look at all of that here in North Carolina, Virginia, the whole East Coast, as well as we go west and recruit as well. Um, IEA is a big feeder for most of the IHSA schools. Do you have to write IEA? Laura will tell you no. Um, I just said that we accept students that have never ridden on a show team before. But IEA, which is the intercollegiate um, high school level, uh, we do look at. College prep invitational. I don't, all of us, um, Johnson and Wales had someone at um, an event this past weekend in New Jersey. Um, Emory and Henry goes to Florida with the College Prep Invitational. There are several uh, venues like that that we recruit in heavily. So Google these events, see where we're going to be. Uh, ask us, shoot us an email and say, are you going to be in my area? I had a student from New York the other day shoot me an email and she said, when are you coming to New York? I would love to have said soon, but with COVID right now, I don't have an answer for. Um, Equine Affair, um, where, where do you guys go to ride? Where are you showing that we should be? Um, give us some feedback on that. We would like to know where you would like to see us. Um, a lot of times we visit your high schools. If you're in a, a high school, um, Chatham Hall, Foxcroft, there's several schools we can name off the top of our head that we visit. We're not only looking for equestrians, but that's one reason we're there. We're looking for good academia students as well. But ask us, shoot us an email. If you're interested in a school and you wanna know if we're gonna be in your area, Maybe we're not going to be in your area, but if you show interest, maybe we would like to be in your area. We might make a trip to come see you. Um, that happens right much with us. And I'm sure the other schools can chime in as well. Scholarship opportunities. I hear this every day. Do you award scholarships and how do you do it? St. Andrews University, yes, awards scholarships, but on top of your academics. Our academics is number one. So that's where your, your main scholarship's going to come. We will offer athletic scholarships, which include equestrian, on top of academics. Um, ask the schools, do you award scholarships, equestrian scholarships? I was traveling with a school this past weekend. They said, we do not offer a single equestrian scholarship, and they are IHSA, but they don't have writing fees. So a lot of times you're gonna see a school that says we do offer scholarships, but do those scholarships offset the writing fees? So there again, there are questions that you as the writer needs to ask, and that way you weigh the options. It depends, it depends on what you're looking for, it depends on what the school offers. Um, they paid all the show fees, they bought all the apparel that their writers were wearing, um, but they did not offer scholarships. So does it weigh out in the end? Probably, probably so. Uh, but there's some questions that Laura, just backing up on what Laura said earlier, ask, make a list. When you visit the schools, ask, do you give scholarships? How do I qualify? What do I need to do? Do I need to send a video? Do I need to ride for your coach? Is your coach gonna be in the area or your admissions person that can come visit with me and see my riding ability? Ask those questions, ask them of all of us. You might need to ask them several times to get, you know, to find out exactly where you need to be and what you need to be doing right now. 
at St. Andrews University, we do start looking at riders eighth to ninth grade. I guarantee the other um, schools on this panel do as well. So it's never too early to start asking us questions and we want you to ask us questions. We wanna meet you in person and we want, to, we want you to ask those questions of us. So speaking of questions, folks, get busy in that, in that question and answer chat in the bottom. Stacy is going to read those out to us or to you and we're gonna answer those for you. So now's the time for you to ask questions of us because we're here to answer them for you. So Stacy, I'm gonna turn the question segment over to you. Yep, thank you, Debbie. Um, so panelists, if you'd like to unmute, um, we have our first question. Anyone wanna take it? I think we've covered a little bit, but maybe we can touch on it again. Um, and the question is from Kristen and it's, can I just ride for fun or do I need to be on a team? And maybe you can just answer for each university. So Odessa, do you wanna start? Sure. So as I mentioned before, um, as far as riding goes at Emory and Henry, you do absolutely do not have to be on a team to ride. Um, you don't have to have any equine interest at all, as long as you want to ride and you get approved to sign up for the appropriate riding class as far as levels go. Um, you are not allowed to come ride for free for fun sort of deal, unless you are in a riding class, if that hopefully that makes some sort of sense. Debbie? I think I did touch on this just for a second, but I'm going to back up what Odessa said. Yes, you can ride at St. Andrews and not be on a competitive team, but it has to be an organized event. You can't just come jump on a horse and ride. Uh, there are liability issues. There are classes going on all the time. Um, we want you to take a PE. We do have an equitation class that is a PE class, so you get credit for it. Um, we want you to be involved in the in the equestrian uh, program. So yes, we do have uh, groups that will come out. Uh, we had the football team come out one time and rode. Uh, is that normal? No. Was that something they did as a bonding experience? Yes. But yes, at St. Andrews, you do not have to be on uh, one of the, the teams to ride. You can take it as a recreational or a PE. And then, um, Laura, when you answer that, because I think we're going to say something similar, the, um, Kristen also wanted to ask, um, if I have nothing to do with equine in my major, can I still ride? So I think we're all kind of saying the same thing there, but go ahead. Sure. Uh, so for Johnson & Wales, um, you do either have to be um, in the equine business management major to take riding classes or on one of our equestrian teams. Um, so there is typically no opportunity to additionally ride um, outside of classes or the teams, except uh, for we have a methods of riding, riding instruction course. Um, and that's taught by some of our students in the equine business management major. They're looking to become trainers. They get, are getting their certification uh, for the state of Massachusetts, which is actually one of the few states that requires all trainers to have certification. Um, so our students will get that. Um, in the process of their schooling. And in order to do that, they also need some mentored teaching hours. They need some time with our faculty, helping them learn to teach. So we can have individuals come to the farm. Um, typically, uh, it will be a semester in length or a little shorter, and they are able to take um, some riding courses from our uh, student instructors. Um, so that's an opportunity to ride without being in the major or on one of the teams. And they like to teach students of all levels in order to get that variety of experience. So that's one way you could ride at Johnson & Wales without being on a team or in the program. Does anyone else want to add before I ask the next question or should I move on? Okay, okay. Um, so we have a question about careers and um, what we see um, for our students getting jobs in this area. Anyone want to tackle that? As far as Emory and Henry goes, I will tell y'all the amount of careers, even just sort of relating to equine anything is huge. You can do almost anything you want involving horses with an equine studies degree, or if you just even like just a minor or took a couple of the classes. Um, personally, I graduated and I went and rode professionally for a couple years for a hunter trainer um, on the other side of Virginia and then decided to start my master's and came back here. 
but I have friends who have done the pre-vet route and done chiropractics for horses. Um, I know barn owners, professional riders, groomers. Um, I have a friend who did sales for Horsewear Ireland, which is pretty cool, and Smart Pack. Um, and then I also have another friend who graduated with me that went into equine law. So there's, I mean, there are really possibilities all over the board. It's a great answer. Anyone else? I'm gonna back up what Odessa said. We've got students, uh, we've got three recent graduates that are working right now in Connecticut for Kent Farrington. So they're traveling to Europe. They're in, they're in uh, West Palm Beach for six months. Um, so they're doing that. They're working with horses on an individual basis. We've got several that I can think of off the top of our head that went the equine science route. They did not go pre-vet. They went equine business management with an equine science concentration. And they are selling pharmaceuticals to vets. Um, we've got several that went the art major route, um, did equine business management minor and they are working for um, the plant horseman is one of them uh, as photographers. So it, it depends, what do you wanna do out there? We've got some of course that are therapeutic, um, they're th therapeutic horsemanship graduates and they own their business businesses all over the country. Um, then we've got some that say, I wanna, I wanna teach, I wanna work in education. They own their own barns, so they own their barns, they manage their barns, they teach in the high school during the week, and on the weekends, they go out and ride and watch, watch, watch their managers uh, and trainers overseeing students that are at their barn. So, like Odessa said, what do you want to do? It's, it's up to you. It's, it's really up to you. And where do you want to go? The jobs are out there. You've just got to be willing to go and explore and live, live, live life and have fun with it. And I will say, just to slightly top that off, every parent always asks me, can my child get a job with this degree? Yes. Yes. Like, hands down, yes. It just depends on what they want to do. I 100% agree um, to all of those careers. Um, we've seen students do all of that here from Johnson & Wales, also going the marketing route. Um, in the sales route, um, we've had students who have gone and sold um, insurance for horses as well right so just like people insure their cars just like you have medical insurance people are insuring their horses um it can save a lot of money in the long run with those vet bills um i know for a fact um can be very helpful so that's just as important um one of the things that we've said here at johnson wales and someone i think debbie you touched on equine affair as a place that we love to go to see students um if we were to go to equine affair and have no idea about anything in the horse world and a 12 year old student came and walked up and asked us questions about um, maybe I'm working for Neutrina I'm selling some nutritional supplements for my horse and I have no idea about anything I'm talking about right I can get laughed out even though I might be a great salesperson I can get laughed out of this fair by a 12 year old because I don't know um, everything about this equine industry. If I can't speak the language, it's hard to have these conversations. So it opens up a whole nother side of things in any of these magazines you see, any of these retailers that you see, even that sales, that advertising aspect, um, media and videography, right? If I don't understand what a horse should look like going over a fence and it's a really ugly chip, and now I'm putting that in my marketing material, nobody's gonna wanna buy my product um, for a horse that isn't performing as well as it should be or getting that ideal image. Um, so just having that knowledge and that skill set is so applicable to so many fields um, out there regardless um, of what you're looking to do, so. You can get great. your admissions too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So we have another question, ladies, and it is, is there such a thing as a physical trainer for horseback riding? Are we talking like a, a trainer, trainer of a horse or a trainer for a rider's body? I'm assuming that's what we're talking about. I'm, I'm going to say, let's go with that. And Kristen, if you wouldn't mind clarifying your question in the chat, if it's not this, we'll be happy to elaborate, but let's, Oh, rider. She says rider. You know, honestly, I, I have no doubt that there is um, a need for that somewhere. Even if you are a physical trainer, per se, for a college or you own your own business or something like that, 
maybe the college has a riding team who has, you know, riders that get injured or need help somehow with physical training. I know at Emory and Henry, at least, granted, none of our physical trainers are equine study students, but they help us out a lot. And, you know, I at home when I hurt myself went to someone who had actually worked with riders before um, on like sprained ankles and things like that. But, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. No, and I agree. I've seen people um, somewhat different, but even offering equestrian specific yoga and equestrian specific workouts. Um, so I think there's a market for it. I think there's a need for it. And I think that um, when you start filling that market and providing that need to people, the people will come um, and purchase that um, skill that you're offering. So it's definitely an opportunity out there for you. Good example of that is the brand, the Fit Equestrian. They mm -hmm. make Workouts for horseback riders and things like that. So it's a possibility. Exactly. I was going to say the same thing that Odessa just said. <laughs> Their places. So get that pre physical therapy, maybe get some pre physical therapy, get some therapeutic horsemanship, keep riding, get an equine business, put it all together and market yourself and you'll have that job. Make it happen. <laughs> So um, we have another question, and it was just to ask each school, can I bring my horse? So Debbie, you want to go first? Yes, you most definitely can bring your horse to St. Andrews. How we do that is we actually interview your horse as well. Once you are accepted to St. Andrews and you have deposited, we will give you a list of barns in the area. Um, and like I said, within a five mile radius of St. Andrews, there's probably 200 boarding options. We have checked those barns out. We have uh, very clearly laid out what we expect from those barn owners. We give you the list. Some of them are student only border barns. Most of them are student or, um, border barns. Um, a lot of our students will go visit with them. Depends on what they want. Do you want full care? Do you want turnout only? Do you want the vet involved if your horse is sick? So at that point, you will get a list of barns that we have approved and continuously check. You'll also, um, we also encourage you to speak with current students that are boarding their horses. Sometimes you may want to board where your sweet mates are boarding, just for convenience sake. If you're going to be out of town a lot on weekends, maybe you won't help if you're um, border only. And, you know, the place to trail ride is with a group of friends. So yes, you can bring your own horse. You can board at our facility or within a five mile radius of barns we've approved. So we also have about 20 stalls open to boarders. Uh, typically we let the seniors go for pick first and, and sort of go by seniority as far as that goes. But I will say we almost always have a stall available just because we have such a large range of people who don't have their own horse versus the couple that do and manage to bring them to college. Um, we also have sort of the same thing that St. Andrews does where we have approved barns in the area that if you don't want your horse necessarily at Emory, um, maybe you want pasture board. We don't have pasture board. We only have full, like full, full board all the way. Um, but we have approved barns that we can give you a list of. Most of them are owned by alumni too, and they're just right around Emory's campus as well as uh, the barn. So pretty much runs the same as St. Andrews minus the fact that I guess our barns aren't approved quite as um, vigorously, I don't think. They're more just local people that we know and alumni. Laura? And I'll say for Johnson & Wales, um, typically our stalls are reserved for all Johnson & Wales owned or leased horses. Um, we are a 32 horse stable, so we like to give you a lot of variety and a lot of different horses to ride while you're here as a student. Um, but just like um, both of the other schools here, we do have a list of options for you in the local area. Um, about 75 different barns um, across probably about a 30 minute radius from our campus or from the uh, equine center itself. So a lot of different options right there uh, for you. And then freshmen are allowed to also have their car on campus, which can, which can make it really easy to get to those outside boarding facilities as well. Um, we provide the transportation to our equine center, but we wouldn't to those outside facilities. So having a car on campus as a freshman would be really helpful for you. And I will say just, sorry, as a sprinkle on the side, 
make sure you guys, when you're looking at colleges, some colleges require you that if you bring your horse, they get to use it in their program. Mm -hmm. So just make sure you're aware of that if that's the case. It's a good point. Um, it looks like we have one more question and that is, should I tour your barn when I visit? Anyone, Laura, anyone want to jump in and say what you think about that? And maybe not just should you, but maybe elaborate a little bit more and like, I know you talked about what to look for, but. Yeah, definitely. I think meeting the people, the students, the horses out at that facility is so important because this is probably where you're going to want to spend the most amount of time uh, while you're here as a student. So that's going to make a really big difference. But some other things to look for is the quality of care uh, you see these horses receiving. What do the horses in their herd look like? Are they well taken care of? Um, are, who's doing the chores? Um, can you be actively involved in the care of these horses, right? So if a horse might be injured and you want to help be involved in their rehab process, see if that's possible. Um, see how clean and professional their turnout is. Um, see what the barn facility looks like when they're not expecting visitors, so to speak, right? So you can go visit a barn any day and see what it really looks like in that true form. Um, I'm not saying drop in unexpectedly, do go during their open hours, do call ahead and let them know, um, but it's really nice to see kind of that everyday uh, use of that facility, what it looks like uh, Monday through Friday, um, regardless of anything else going on. So definitely check out the quality of the horses, quality of facilities, um, and see what the people are like, because that's who you spend your time with. And as far as Emory and Henry goes, if you're an equine student and you come through me, you automatically get scheduled to go to the barn. You'll meet the coaches. You'll do all that. So that's part of your visit. I'm going to say the same as, as Laura and Odessa. Absolutely. You're going to spend four years and probably 75% of your, your time at the barn. Oh, absolutely. Go check that barn out. Ask questions. That's where you're going to see students. Stop and ask questions. No matter if it's a stall cleaner or a student getting ready to tackle the horse, they love to talk. So stop and check them out and ask questions. Um, and I think it's, it's, we've given you guys some awesome questions to ask. So feel free to go back and watch this on our website and just maybe take some of those down if you didn't take a picture. And then I do have um, one more question that just came in and said, what is the general price difference if you bring your own horse versus using a horse already located at the stable. Does anyone want to tackle that? It might be hard because it's going to be school specific, but do you guys know like a general price difference, a range? At St. I'm going to just jump in at St. Andrews. If you're competing, you are riding a St. Andrews University horse. Um, if you bring your horse, that is for your pleasure maybe private lessons, but there's no, with us, if you're part of our team, you're riding our horses. Um, a lot of times our, our family members, the family members will say, if you go, your horse is going, uh, but just know that is strictly for your pleasure and maybe private lessons, but you're gonna ride our horse. So we don't have a difference in, in prices. I feel like as far, it's kind of a loaded question. Um, Obviously the board is gonna make a big difference of the price bringing your own horse versus riding ours. Um, you can take your horse to outside shows um, when we attend outside shows, but it's sort of the same deal as St. Andrews. We use our school horses for inside shows like house shows and things like that. And you don't pay to ride them other than your class fee to actually ride in the class. Um, but as far as shows go, it's, it's no different. You basically save money on the board alone if you don't bring your horse, that's typical. And for Johnson and Wales, like I mentioned, um, typically we do not have students bringing their own horses to campus. For whatever reason, if you did, it would be that additional board that you would be paying. So that would make a difference. Um, but traditionally, we do not charge anything additional for your riding courses or competitions here at the university. So um, truly, it wouldn't make too much of a difference for us unless you were exactly paying for that board. All right, those are all the questions. I think we answered everyone's questions in the chat, ladies. You're amazing, thank you. And um, participants, if you do have any other questions, it looks like we have about 30 seconds left. Maybe we could squeeze one more question in if you have one. I don't see anything coming through. Debbie, you wanna wrap us up then? 
Thanks, everybody, for being here. It has been fun and a pleasure. And students and families, we hope we answered your questions. If we didn't, make sure you go to all of our um, uh, websites. You can check us out there. You can also shoot us an email. We're all listed there. And we look forward to seeing you in an event. Awesome. Well, thank you panelists and thank you students for joining us today. Uh, when you close this window, there's gonna be a link to a very quick four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback that you can provide us. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted this fall, so be sure to sign up for any additional sessions at strivescan.com forward slash Virginia. In about a week, you will be able to find this recording uh, as well as other sessions recordings at strivescan.com forward slash Virginia. Thank you so much. Have a good day.